fair? I think it's next weekend. I'm not, don't hold me to it, though. Uh, I think that's next weekend coming up. They usually have it about this time. So be aware of that as well. I think so. It was in the paper. I can't remember. Huh? It was in the paper, but I can't remember. Yeah. I want to say it's next weekend, but I could be wrong with that. But I know if it's not next weekend, I know it's coming up in Old Town. So be aware of that as well that's coming up. Anything else? If not, Mr. Al, come and lead us another hand. <coughs> Four hundred and twenty-nine. All that thrills my soul. <coughs>
as they are with her right now, and that is going on. So remember them in prayer and what they are dealing with. Johnny and Debbie are traveling back from Alabama uh, this morning. Uh, so pray, continue to pray for them and what's going on. Um, Johnny gets, uh, he's got to go to the doctor tomorrow to get uh, some, get prepared or get some fusions done as far as with his treatments. So that will be taking place for him tomorrow. Uh, pray for Debbie Garrett, her blood pressure is a little higher than what it should be. So we need to remember her in prayer and what she's dealing with as far as with her own health issues as well. So just continue to remember both of them in prayer. Pray for strength, guidance, and for help with both of them. Um, just different people who are not here with us this morning, we want to continue to remember them in prayer. Uh, Daniel Milton, Trish, how's Trish doing? I talked to her last night. She's just got a lot of stuff going on. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, we right. miss her and pray for her. So remember Trish in prayer. Yeah. And she's dealing with a lot of her at home with yeah. family things. So remember her in prayer. Uh, Renee is out today. She's under the weather, upper respiratory stuff? Or? Um, intestinal. Okay. So pray for pray for Renee. And she, is, she is out this morning and under the weather. So remember Renee Bryan in prayer. It's for what she's dealing with as well. So do pray for her. <clears throat> Others on our prayer list, just continue to remember the Lynch family, <coughs> Harvey, Dubby, um, Ruby, and also your son, Ronnie. <coughs> also pray for Mr. Billy and them. They're going to be in New Orleans, in Missouri. Missouri, he's going to be in Missouri next weekend for a family reunion. <coughs> so do pray for you. <coughs> God, the mercy is following y'all. And y'all will be traveling. <coughs> Other prayer requests. Glenda. Peter's got an outpatient surgery procedure on the 22nd <coughs> of September. So just remember okay. him in prayer. For you. Richard. For Richard. Oh, Richard, I'm sorry. I didn't catch that. Okay. <coughs> okay. We'll do. Thank you. We'll do. Others. Other prayer requests. Cynthia. Um, <coughs> Yes, a lot of stress at work and yes. His and back went out. Yes. Yes. And also, um, Lily, um, Thursday for Chicago. Yeah, I heard you're going to Chicago. Second honeymoon? No. <laughs> <laughs> never gone first. <laughs> first honeymoon. What? First honeymoon. Oh, whoa. First. Yeah, so child emergency for y'all as y'all will be going to Chicago. Yeah, we, we fly back in on Sunday. Okay. So, okay. Hey, enjoy, 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 even though it is, would that be considered northerners? Chicago thing? Yeah. And Yankee Country? Yeah. It's actually going to be warmer there than San you, Are you serious? Wow. Warmer in Chicago than here? Yeah, it's lower than Wow. I didn't think any place was warmer than here. I didn't think so either. <laughs> Other than maybe Florida, Florida. Uh, remember the many people there. That gym dealing with oh, devastation um, as far as the heat too. And, and, and you have, I don't know, I don't know if thousands is right, maybe millions of houses that where there's no power and they're dealing with 95, 96 degree heat and the humidity is high up there. So pray for all those people throughout the Florida area and what they're dealing with, as well as the ones west of us in Texas and what they're still dealing with with Hurricane Harvey at that place and then Florida, Hurricane Irene hit that place. Um, uh, Irma, I mean, Hurricane Irma hit that place. So pray for both of, all, both of these states, Texas and, and Florida. But remember y'all in prayers, y'all go up that way. We sure will. And also the islands. Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely, yes. One, one island, the green, the green vegetation used to be there, no longer there. It's all brown. It's just, it's just devastated everything, yes. Yes, it, it may take, if it ever comes back, it'll take years and years for it to come back. Yes. And the, uh, the Larry family, very well. Good. Well, good. I don't know how brown this property is. I haven't spoken to her right. about that one, but um, okay. the, they, did, they did good. They were fine. And, um, <coughs> Girls' aunt in Houston, she got lucky there was no damage to her. Oh, good. And she was able to go back to work too. 
Well, good. Prayers of Thanksgiving on both on both ends of that. Yes. You know, she lived in Humble, Texas, up north, yes. right north of Houston. So yes. she was very fortunate. Yes. Yes. She was in a good area. Okay. Well, good. 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 Linda. Prayers also for the um, people that are up there helping. I have a friend that works for Clico. Yes. And they always send people up there. And, sure. Um,
Well, we want to continue to remember Darlene and Shell in prayer. Remember, continue to remember you. We sure will. Yes. Ginger. Garrett's mom and sister in Kentucky, um, Johnny's stepmom, Mary Garrett. Also continue to remember uh, Johnny's mom, Ms. Col uh, uh, Ms. Francis, she has some medical issues that she's dealing with. So pray for her as well as Jake. But I also ask you to lift up Ms. Francis as well. She's just having a very, very hard time right now with Johnny having cancer. So it's very hard on her right now. So pray for her and remember her in prayer. Um, as well, which you deal with. Anyone else? <clears throat> Again, traveling mercies for those who are traveling and will be traveling, uh, just back and forth to work or whatever. Uh, for those of us who are not going on a trip to Chicago or other places far away, but traveling mercies for all who are traveling. Uh, so that's, that's good. Uh, just, just be careful out there. Pray for our young people today. And many things that uh, come up in the world today and what they are bombarded with. You remember what it's like when you were young coming up. You thought you knew everything and then everybody just throws everything at you. And you're just like, wow, so i got to digest all this stuff or figure out what's going on and what, what's good and what's not good and throw things away that's not. So pray for the young people today and what they deal with on a daily basis each and every day. Uh, we are talking this morning. Pray for the many, many people in nursing homes. Again, as I always mention, the forgotten people that are there, pray for them and their families. But pray for them. They are lonely people, and remember them in prayer as well. Again, the people who are not with us this morning, for whatever reason, we have few that are out, pray for them. The many that are dealing with different health issues and health problems, pray for them as well. Remember them in prayer. As always, Two things. Pray for salvation for those who do not know Jesus Christ. And I don't care if you like them or don't like them. Pray for them. And I would tell you, pray for their soul that they may get saved. And that way they'll become a better person. So pray for them. God, Jesus said, pray for your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. And that's what we need to do. We need to pray for them. Pray that they will become like Paul, who persecuted the Christians, and he himself became a Christian. With God, all things are possible. Pray for them. Secondly, always give thanks to the Lord. No matter what's going on in your life, whether you're dealing with sickness, whether you're dealing with this, whether you're dealing with family problems, or whether you're dealing with work problems, or whatever may be going on, always give thanks to the Lord. Three times a day, morning, afternoon, and evening, Daniel would go into his room, open the windows, and he would pray to the Lord. And he was in captivity for over 60 years. He never gave it up. He always looked to the Lord. Three times a day, he would pray. And you know what he would say? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Because he knew the Lord was with him. Even though he himself was in captivity and what he was going through, his attitude was, thank you. And that's where we need to be. Thank you, Lord. Just give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. Just give thanks to the Lord for all that he's done. Think about it. And don't take for granted one minute what the Lord has already done in our lives. I don't care how young you are or how old you are. Remember the things that the Lord has already done. This is what the advice that Moses gave to the people. When you leave this land, remember, do not forget what the Lord has done. Many times we forget what the Lord has already done in our lives. Think about it. What an awesome God we have. Always give thanks to the Lord. He is good. We may not understand everything, but He's good. The Lord is always good. He always helps. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, we come before you this morning, and Lord, 
We lift up all the prayers, all the concerns, the many things that we have lifted up to you this morning in private, the many that have been spoken and unspoken in life, the many that are dealing with different health issues and health problems in their lives. We ask for healing. We ask for grace, for mercy, and for help in the lives of each and every one. Some are here, some at home, some are away. But we lift them all up and we pray for them. We pray for the many that are struggling and going through difficulties. The things in their lives that they're dealing with, maybe at work, at home. And you know, even the battles we have within ourselves, the many things that we strive, we say, okay, Lord, help me to overcome this, or help me, Lord, to deal with this. We ask for your grace, for your mercy, and for your help. Lord, we thank you for many, many blessings you have blessed us with. We thank you for helping us. We thank you for being with us. Again, we lift up the many, many people. We lift up the people west of us in Texas and east of us in Florida that have been hit by these hurricanes. We pray for the many, many people that have been devastated and are trying to rebuild. We pray for the many, many volunteers, first responders, and many other people that are helping in both of these states. We pray for them and we lift them all up and we pray for your help. Lord, we pray for salvation for those that we know, friends, family members, co-workers, and even for people we don't know. We pray for salvation for many in need of Jesus Christ. We pray for those who are not with us this morning for whatever reason, and we lift them up, and we pray for your help and your guidance in their lives. And Lord, again, we, we also lift up the people in nursing homes. Help them, Lord, and be with them as well as they are there and forgotten in many cases. And Lord, we pray for salvation. And Lord, we pray for help. We pray for grace. We pray for mercy. Be with us this morning, Lord. Lead us and guide us. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Let us stand now as Al comes and leads us in our offertory hymn. 426. Victory in Jesus.
blessings. We come now, Lord, and we give you back a portion of what you have blessed us with. We ask, Lord, that you will see to it that all is collected, is used for the furtherance of your kingdom, for the spreading of the gospel. And Lord, may you bless both the gift and the giver. In the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>
our own lives today as well. First thing is that God gave Nebuchadnezzar the victory. Notice what took place in the first seven verses of Daniel chapter 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judea, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And he and the Lord delivered Jehoiakim, king of Judea, into his hands along with some of the articles in the temple of God. These he carried off to the temple of his God in Babylonia and put them in the treasure in the house of his God. Then the king ordered Aspenaz, chief of the court officials, to bring in some of the Israelites from the royal family and nobility, young men without physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, and well-informed, quick to understand and qualified to serve in the king's palace. He was to teach them the language and the literature of the Babylonians. The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years, and then after that, they were, in, they were be to enter the king's service. Among them, from Judea, was Daniel, Hananiah, Mysiel, and Azariah. The chief officials gave them new names. To Daniel, he gave Belta Sassarach. To Hananiah, he gave Shadrach. To Mysiel, he gave Meshach. To Azariah, he gave Abednego. Now, down through history, we have come to know the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But this was their Gentile names given to them. Again, their, their real names was Hananiah, Mysiel, and Azariah. That was their God-given name, as well as Daniel. Sadly, what do we see here? God's chosen people chose not any longer to follow the things of God. They did evil in the sight of God. They worshiped false idols. So, rather than living like pagans in a holy land and disgracing his name, Jehovah God would rather have them live in the shameful captivity in a pagan land. God gave them over to these kings. This was pronounced. Now this did not come as a shock to them. They were told prior to their captivity, prior to their uh, being besieged by the king, they were told by the prophet Jeremiah that this would happen and that they would be in captivity for 70 years. In Jeremiah chapter 25, and in verse 8 through 13, it is known. And here is what Jeremiah told the people what would happen. And that it was going to happen because of their idolatry and learning from God. Therefore, in Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 8, Therefore, the Lord Almighty says, Because you have not listened to my words, I will summon all the peoples of the north and my servant Nebuchadnezzar. Now can you imagine? God using the Gentile king. My servant Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, declared the Lord, and I will bring them against the land and its inhabitants and against all the surrounding nations. I will completely destroy them and make them an object of horror and scorn and an everlasting one. I will banish from the sounds of joy and gladness the voices of brides and bridegrooms, the sound of millstones and the lights of lamps. This, <clears throat> this whole country will become a desolate wasteland and this nation will serve the king of Babylon for 70 years. Why? Because they turned their backs on God. And you know what they said when, when Jeremiah told them this? You can read this later on. They, they didn't believe Jeremiah. Instead, they believed the other people. Jeremiah said, this is what's going to happen to you. This is what's going to take place. God had spoken about this. They still didn't believe it. But understand, not all the people were unfaithful. Just like today. Not all people are unfaithful. A remnant. A very few. Are still, was still dedicated to Jehovah God. 
But yet, in this remnant, like back in the Old Testament, New Testament, the message to the faithful remnant was like that unto the churches that God gave, where the seven churches that are written about in Revelation, and to the remnant. This is what God said, and it still holds true today. In Revelation chapter 2, and in verse 7, here, written to the church in Ephesus, it says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. And then in verse 11 of that same chapter, to Smyrna, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes will not be hurt by all but his second coming. <coughs> and then in chapter 3, that too was, was written to another church. And he says the same thing. He says, yet you have a few people, a remnant, in Sardis that have not soiled their clothes. They have walked with me, dressed in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes will be like them, will be dressed in white. <coughs> And I will never blot out his name from the book of life. So you have this. <coughs> but even here, there was a remnant of people that were still faithful to God. That still believed. And among those faithful people, Daniel and his three friends, Hananiah, Mysiel, and Azariah, they were faithful to God. And I'm sure there were many others as well compared to, let's just say, millions of people. Maybe there's only a few hundred. Maybe there's only a few. We don't, we don't know how many were very faithful to the Lord. They remained faithful. But there was only a remnant in comparison to who were there. But yet Daniel and his friends were there. They were, now, what would happen here? They were given new names, new homes, new languages to learn, and new customs. Totally different. Taken from their home in Judea and, get, and <coughs> brought over to Babylon. Thousands of miles from their own place. Here, their God given names were replaced with pagan names. 17 years old. Can you imagine? 17 years old and no one to help but Jehovah God. No parents, no Christian leadership, no priest. And no temple. There was no temple for them to go worship in Babylon. Nothing there. 17 years old. Can you imagine? What would you do, Will? Somebody came along and took you and brought you to Russia. You have to learn a new language, new customs, new everything. Or a place where you don't want to be. 17 years old. Can you imagine? 17 years old. Young man, and here he is, dealing with all of this. Megan, what would you do? You're 18, right? Yeah. What would you do? Take you away from your mom. The people you know, all of this. You've got to understand the mindset here. He is taken from the very people that he loved, the very home that he loved, the very country that he loved. And he's tossed into a place where he doesn't want to be. All because the majority of the people of Israel turned their backs on Jehovah God. Unreal. Unbelievable. You know, today in our country, little by little, there are things that are being taken away from our young people today. No longer can they pray in school. No longer are there Bibles to where they can read. No Christian leadership. And other things that are being taken away from our young people today. Being told lies that are not true. Being told that the Bible is not what you need to learn from. Being told that they have to learn other things other than what's in the Bible. And that the Bible is being replaced and other things as well. And even, even with, with all of that, how many times have you seen where people daily are turning their backs on the things of God? The Christian values, the godly values that 
some of us grew up with. And we see it's being twisted. Or we see that it's no longer valid in our country and in our place. The godly values are no longer there. We see this happening in our land, slowly but surely. And here we see these young men. I, I don't know how old Hananiah, Mysiel, or Azariah were. If they were maybe the same age. And there, there's no telling how many others were young like them and, and put into that type of atmosphere or that type of environment and what they had to deal with by themselves. And so we see this here. God gave them over to the king because of the people's unfaithfulness. How sad indeed. But the second thing we need to look at is that even though Daniel and his friends do not want to be, but yet they are there, is that God gave success to Daniel. Notice what happens as they are now in Babylon. And now they are under the king's service. Look at what happens in verses 8 through 16. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, and he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Now God, Jehovah, has caused the official to show favor and sympathy to Daniel. But the official told Daniel, I am afraid of my Lord, King Nebuchadnezzar, who assigned your food and drink. Why should he see you looking worse than the other men your age? The king would then have my head because of you. Then Daniel said to the guard, whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mizael, and Azariah. Please test your servants for ten days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of young men who eat the royal food. And treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So, he agreed to do this, and he tested them for ten days. At the end of the ten days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. So the God took away their choice food and their wine, and they were to drink and gave them vegetables instead. Now, can you imagine? These four young men, I think, represented, again, the remnant of that day, the faithful remnant. These four men, four young youths, Kids, still wet behind the ears, still have a lot to learn. And yet here, there was a faithful remnant. This is the same thing that is talked of in God's Word in Romans chapter 11 that is written to the people in Rome. As God's Word so says in Romans chapter 11 in verse 4 and 5 concerning here as the Apostle Paul tells the people about the remnant, he goes back and he relates what took place in the life of Elijah and how Elijah thought, Lord, I am the only one here left. Remember when Elijah ran because he was afraid of Jezebel? And the Lord found him in a cave and said, what are you doing here? He says, I'm the only one left. There's nobody else. He says, Look, she's unkilled everybody. And this is the answer the Lord gave Elijah. And the, uh, as far as the, and the Lord had killed your the Lord they killed your prophets they tore down your altars I am the only one left and they're not there trying to kill me that's what Elijah tells the Lord and then the Lord answered him and says you're mistaken you're wrong you're an heir I have reserved for myself seven thousand who have not bowed to the knee to Baal so too at the present time. There is a remnant chosen by grace, and if by grace, it is no longer works. If it were grace, it would no longer be grace. So Paul here is relating to the people in the time of his, saying, listen, there's still a remnant, just like there was a remnant in Elijah. Well, there's a remnant here in Daniel and his men and his friends, along with several others. They were the faithful remnant that God has preserved for this particular reason and purpose. He always does these things. 
But and so there, there's, there are other faithful ones besides Daniel, Hananiah, Hazariah, and Azariah. Besides these four men, there were many. There were others who were faithful and still looked to the Lord, even though they're not mentioned in the book of Daniel. There were others who were faithful. Now the challenging of the faith of Daniel and his friends. The Babylonians could change Daniel's name. They could change the textbooks and try to teach him the things of Babylon. They can give him the menu and say, here's what we want you to eat, instead of eating these things here. But they couldn't change Daniel's heart. Could not. I like with the King James and how the King James puts verse 8. You know, the NIV says that Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And the King James, it says, Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. And I like that. In the heart. Remember what Jesus said, out of the heart comes all of these things. See, Daniel's heart was right with God. Daniel asked and pleaded with the chief official. Why? Because the food was offered to idols. And for Daniel and his friends and the other Jews to partake in this would have defiled themselves according to their Jewish custom. The food was, was okay, but the problem was it was offered to idols. And by partaking of it, they too would say, okay, it's all right. And what they're saying, it wasn't. But notice, he asked them. He, gave, he said, and the Lord opened the heart of this chief official in order to hear what Daniel had to say. Notice, Daniel doesn't protest. He doesn't lock himself in. He doesn't do a starving thing or makes any kind of threats whatsoever. And all he's doing is depending upon the power of God. That's what he's doing concerning what we see here. It's amazing. You know, again, the Apostle Paul, again, writes about the same thing in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and verse 23 and following. And many, many of us have read this over and over again. You know, he says, everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything is constructive. Nobody should seek his own good, but the good of others. Eat anything sold in the meat market without raising questions of conscience. For the earth is the Lord and everything in it. However, if some unbeliever invites you to a meal and you want to eat, and whatever you put you forth, go ahead and eat it without raising questions. But if anyone says this has been offered to and has been offered in a sacrifice, do not eat it. Both for the sake of the man who told you, and for the conscience' sake as well. The other man's conscience, I mean, not yours. So you see, even here, back in Rome, Paul says the same thing, that there was food being offered to idols. Daniel's doing the same thing. Because his food has been offered to idols, for my own conscience' sake, I will not partake of it. But again, he asks for permission concerning this, and what is to take place concerning it. And again, Paul writes in chapter, uh, chapter 10 again prior to this, as he says, these things happen as examples. What things? The things that we read about in the Old Testament. Everything that we have read about in the Old Testament, for us, everything we even read in the New Testament, they're written down as examples for us to live by. And written down, what, as warnings for us, on whom the fulfillment of the age has come. So that if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. But no temptation has seized you except what is common to man. What happens? God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. And when you are tempted, he will be also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Again, the temptation has come now to Daniel. He needs a way out. He talks to the God, to the chief official. The chief official, by God's power, says, makes an agreement, says, okay. See, like Daniel, when facing problems in, in life, 
what must we do? Ask the Lord for help. Ask the Lord for guidance. Ask him for courage to face the problem. Humbly and honestly, and like Daniel, God will give us success. Look at what God has done in the past. Think about the many people. My prime example has always been Joseph. Joseph went through a whole bunch of things, and I'm talking about over years. And yet, he never gave up his faith in God. He always looked to God for help, even though he was in prison, even though he was falsely accused by Pharaoh's wife, put into prison, and there he was there, and I'm talking about years and years. But yet he remained faithful, going through all of that. Or Daniel too. Daniel begins, and he's beginning his captivity with the help of the Lord. He's starting off with God, just as he had done from when he lived in Judah. Nothing here has changed. Again, they could change his name, they could change his menu, they could change many things, but they can't change the heart of Daniel. His heart belonged to the Lord, no matter what. And so God gave him success, as we see here, as he did this for 10 days. God gives us successes too, but we must look to him on a daily basis, each and every day. Then the third thing took place. Not only did God give Daniel and the three friends success, he also gave them special blessings. I really believe that we as believers, we miss out on many, many blessings. And I think we do this because we compromise our values. We compromise what we know to be true. And we don't do what we're supposed to do. And we miss out on so many blessings. Here God gave special blessings to Daniel, Hananiah, Mysiel, and Azariah. Awesome. Look at what happens. At the end of the ten days, the God took it away. Now, verses 17 and following. To these four men, God gave. God gave. Knowledge. Understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. At the end of the time set by the king, three years now, at the time set by the king, the chief official presented all of them to Nebuchadnezzar. Now again, I don't know how many he presented to them. He presented them all. The king talked with all of them. And what did he find? None, zero, equal, with Daniel, Ananiah, Mysiel, and Azariah as they entered the king's service. And every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned him, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. And Daniel remained there to the first year of King Cyrus. Can you imagine what's taking place here? 17 years old, okay, three years have passed. Let's say Daniel is 20, 21 years old. And so are his friends. And they're smarter than anybody else in the kingdom. God gave them knowledge. Gave them the aptitude. Gave them what nobody else had by the power of God. It's almost like this, the, what God gave Solomon. Remember when Solomon, he asked God, he said, Lord, give me wisdom. And he said, there was none wiser than that of Solomon. See, it's God who gives us these things. We don't do this on our own. It's God who enables us to do and to be. These four youths and studied and applied themselves. That is true, but God gave them the skills to learn the material and discernment to understand it. We don't know how many students they went through. Doesn't matter. God set these four above all the rest. He blessed them. He endowed them with a special blessing and ability. And if you notice in there what it says, that as the king talked to all of them in the matter of wisdom and understanding, and he questioned them all, he found them ten times better than anyone else. Ten times better than all of them. What a testimony of what God can do. 
and what God has already done. And remember, just as God has blessed these, remember the past before them, he blessed so many as well, besides Solomon, David, Abraham, Joseph, Noah, and the list goes on and on. And beyond that, and even today, God gives special blessings. He enables us to learn and to, and to be able to have knowledge as well. Whatever crisis or test comes our way, we need to follow the example of Daniel and his three friends. Later on, his three friends were tested again. You remember the story. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. Again, their, te their faith was tested. What did they say? doesn't matter what you do, O king. We're going to serve our God and him alone. You can get the fire as hot as you want. You can throw us in there. It won't matter. No matter what happens to us, we will remain faithful. And they were. They were thrown into the fire. And yet God preserved them. That's not always going to be the case. But God is ever present with all of his people. Understand, faith is living without scheme. Faith is bringing glory to God. And that's what we see here. And as long as Daniel was in captivity for his 60 years or 70 years, however long he was in captivity, he always gave glory to God. Even when they brought him before the kings, and each one, he says, we heard that you can do this. He says, no, I can't do any of this, but God has given me the ability to do this. He gave glory to God. And this is what we need to do as well. The psalmist, I think, says it correctly in Psalm chapter 50. In verse 15, call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you will honor me. And that's what Daniel had done. Again, remember what our Lord and our Savior so says as well in Matthew chapter 15 when he's talking about the heart. And this is what we're talking about, the heart. Daniel had a heart after the things of God. His heart was right before God. And our Lord Jesus Christ so commanded and so said concerning in Matthew chapter 15, verse 18 and following. He says, but the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart. These are what makes a person unclean. For out of the heart comes evil desires, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimonies, slander. These are what makes a person unclean. See, this is what happens. When, when people speak, and they lie, and they cheat, and they steal, where is it coming from? The heart. Daniel's heart was right before God. Joseph's heart was right before God. We see the examples of people and how God blessed them and continued to be with them. Why? Because their heart was right before God. They honored God. Even when things didn't go the way they thought it should. Even when they were going through rough times, they remained faithful to God. Even if it wasn't their fault, it didn't matter. It wasn't Joseph's fault. Joseph was innocent. He didn't blame God, nor did he desert God. It's not Daniel's fault that Daniel's in this situation. But he's still faithful to God. His heart was still after the things of God. He easily could have said, hey, look at me now. But instead, he remained faithful. His heart was right before God. What's in your heart? Is Christ there? Is he the center of your heart? Do you truly know him as Lord and as Savior? You know, again, the word of God, the Apostle Paul, he so writes concerning. And this is what some of you were. What were some of these people? They were thieves. There were people who were greedy. There were drunkards. There were slanderers. There were male prostitutes, idolaters, adulterers, and living immoral lives. He says, this is what some of you were, but you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. See, this is what changes the heart. The Lord Jesus Christ. He came and he died on the cross. He died for our sins. And that when we repent of our sin and put our faith in Jesus Christ, He changes our heart. That we no longer 
say things that we shouldn't say. We no longer think or want to think of things that is going against the values and the things of God. Instead, he changes our heart, our attitude, and everything else about us. This is what we were. This is what I were. Years and years and years ago. Am I perfect? No. Am I striving? Yes. Am I there? No. Am I continuing? Yes. And one day I will be. Christ died on the cross. And by his blood I've been cleansed and made old. Well, so can you. If you know Jesus Christ, make a profession. Make it public today by knowing him. If you don't know him. But if you do, hold on to the things of God, the values that God so requires us to do. And what is written here for us. Remember, let this be a light that you walk by. Let this light light your path as you walk in life. There are two roads you can walk in life. Jesus says there's a narrow road and there's the wide road. Walk down the narrow road, because with it, it's you and the Lord, nothing else. The wide road, everybody walks that path and it leads to destruction. But the narrow road is the one that leads to the Lord. But the question is, is what's your heart like? Do you know him? Daniel resolved himself in his heart not to defile himself before God. What is in your heart? Do you know Jesus Christ? your Lord and Savior. Let us stand. Almighty God, as we come before you again, we thank you, Lord, for your word and for what you have so related and how you have, Lord, told us the things that you would like for us to do. Lord, if there's anyone here this morning whose heart is not right, and not, Lord, they may have been a Christian for a long time, or they may not be a believer even now, but you have opened their hearts. I pray that they will confess their sin. I pray they will bring it to you and they will come unto you and have their hearts right before you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Turn to hymn number 275. 275 as we sing all three stanzas of I surrender all. All. Everything. Surrender it. Give it all up to the Lord. Don't hold anything back. If you hold anything back, it will only hinder your walk with the Lord. He says, surrender all, everything. Do you truly know him as Lord and Savior? If not, come today, just as you are, and allow the Lord to change your life and your heart as well. As we sing 275 together.
God and His Word has really spoken to all of us. We can take examples, not only from Daniel, but from all people written to us in the Bible. They are God's children. And one day we'll see them all. The examples that we look to and follow. We can talk to them time after time and just talk and see what they went through and what took place. And it's not written for us in here and what has happened as well. They're with the Lord right now. And I pray that you know the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If not, we're praying for you that you will one day come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You have a good day. We invite you to come back Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Let me encourage if any who come, you can even come here at 6.15 or 6.30. Understand, there's food here. For those of you who have not showed up on Wednesday, you're missing out on food too. <laughs> Besides the Bible study. Last week we had gumbo, we had uh, tacos, Salad. We have potato salad, we have bratwurst. Uh, sandwiches, what? We have bratwurst. Yeah, we have bratwurst. We have, I mean, food, uh, I mean, it's like a feast, I mean. So if you worry about not cooking, don't worry about cooking, just come. Uh, you, you can come and enjoy the eating of it, and then we have some Bible study afterwards. And understand that we, even though we're supposed to, Bible study is supposed to start at 7, we don't start exactly at 7 o'clock, nor do we end at 8 o'clock. It may end a little later because of that. You know, they sit around the table and they're eating and having fellowship, and that's good. We're I mean, very liberal as far as with, with everything there. But let me invite you to come if you're not. If, you, if Like I said, if it's a problem with food, don't let it be a problem. We've got food. It, it turned, I, I'm only start out with just a few sandwiches. Everybody else brings something. That's good, and that's okay. I mean, you missed out on the world-famous gumbo of Glenda's this past Wednesday. <laughs> Gee. Yeah, it, was, it was good. It was good, Mr. Billy. You, you had some, huh? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, if not, like I said, just come on. We, we, we have a good time of fellowship at the beginning, and then we have Bible study. Uh, the women have one class, and the men have another class. So if you want to come, enjoy, and you come with us on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Uh, like I said, you can, you can come here as early as 6.15. You'll let me here about 6 o'clock. So you can come here about 6.15, and that'll be fine. Uh, or that we, we have stuff there as well. Uh, if not, we invite you to come back next week. Sunday school, 9 o'clock, worship service, 10.30. Again, next Sunday will be the business meeting after the morning worship, just a few things we need to discuss concerning uh, what's taking place here at Bayou Baptist Church that we need input on and also voting on as well. So be aware of that as well. Uh, again, just remember the many things that are going on during the course of the week. Um, and walk by faith each and every day. Have a good day and a good week in the Lord as well. Al, lead us in closing prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, again we come before you thanking you for all that you've done. Thanking you, Father, for watching over us, keeping us safe. Praying again for those that aren't able to be with us this morning for whatever reason. Touching their mm -hmm. hearts healing their bodies. I pray, Lord, that we all continue <clears throat> to grow, to become more and more trusting in you. Be with us now as we leave and go our separate ways. Bring us back to worship and fellowship again together. In thy son's precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.